To say it's your birthday Happy birthday to you To say it's your birthday We're gonna have a good time Would you like me to dance? Birthday Take a chance and a chance Birthday Would you like me to dance? Birthday It's my birthday! Welcome to Hacker Week! Yes, that's right, I am 55 years old today! Happy birthday to me! And I figured it would be really fitting for the project today to involve my favorite 8-pin dip chip. The 555 timer. You got it. Got the 555 t-shirt on and it's time to get started on this thing. It's the Squonk Box 55. So let's go back in time and I'll show you how I created this crazy project. Here we go. We are getting started with everything on a breadboard. I've got a 555 set up here. It's in A stable mode, which means that it's an oscillator outputting a specific frequency. The frequency is determined by the resistor that's between pins 6 and 7, and then another resistor between pins 7 and 8, and a capacitor that goes from pin 6 to ground. Those three components are what determine the on-off time of the 555 output at pin 3. In this case, I've got a 100 ohm resistor between pins uh, 6 and 7. I've got a 1K potentiometer between 7 and 8, a 4.7 microfarad electrolytic capacitor between 6 and ground, and let's see, the reset, which is pin 4, is tied out to the positive rail voltage. Always a good idea to do that. I never used to do that on some of my early projects. Many people have said better to do that. It keeps the 555 more stable, so I've been doing that from now on. Over here off from pin 3, I have a decoupling capacitor before it goes to the speaker, otherwise the speaker would not play uh, the square waveform. This is just a 1 microfarad electrolytic cap. So let's plug this in to a 9 volt voltage. You can hear a tone coming out of there, and it will vary as I change this potentiometer. Higher frequency or lower frequency. So, what the idea is here is we put this thing together on a uh, perf board and then I connect up 13 of these 1K potentiometers uh, between pins 7 and 8, but none of them are actually connected because between each one of them and pin 8 will be a switch. So if you trigger the switch, you will trigger that resistor tuned to a specific frequency. So I'll start out with a note like down here somewhere. Let's just call that C. It's probably really not C. And then we'll go an octave above that. Which is about there somewhere. So there will be 13 notes in between that just like the 13 notes that are on a keyboard between C and C. So we'll talk a little more about that later too. So now that you understand what's going on, we will get started building the rest of the project. We need an enclosure first, so let's move on to that. How about a cigar box? I've got a cigar box here and I've got some of these uh, switches that I have quite a few of. I've just about used them all up. I got them uh, from a salvage electronics box quite a few years ago. I think there was Got a couple hundred of them and I'm down to maybe 20 left. But this is just a momentary contact switch. You drill a half inch hole, put it in there. It's got a nut on the back to mount it. Right now I've got them all laying here upside down just to check out the layout. So here are my 13 uh, keys. C, C sharp, uh, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B and C. 
So I'll drill all the holes here and mount all these up. And then I can mount a little speaker uh, or two in the box here, maybe up on the top. I might even go ahead and put a LM386 amplifier in here just to kick up the volume a bit. Right now let's get uh, all these guys mounted up in the box. So I'll do a layout, drill some holes, mount them all up. So here we go again with the grid paper, my favorite layout tool. Uh, I've got this one set up the same width as the top of the uh, cigar box, as you can see there. And I've got these all spaced out properly as it turns out. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. Four spaces between each one works out pretty good. So I'll just make a mark there where each one of those are, and then in between is just the line that's in between. So let's make a mark there, and there, one there, and there, and there. And then we can just get all this stuff out of the way. And now we can make some lines here. According to my circle template, it looks like a 5 8 hole, maybe a, a 19 30 seconds. Wow! Isn't the uh, English system just awesome? Man. Okay, well let's just get that down to freaking millimeters. God. 19, 30 seconds. What the hell kind of measurement is that? Okay, it looks like it's going to be about 26 millimeters. We'll take care of that. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use that hole right there, which is the 19, 30 seconds. <laughs> just to uh, mark my template here get an idea where everything's gonna go ahead of time make sure everything is gonna line up okay before I do the final drilling of the holes there we go these up here are gonna be representing the black keys and these will represent the white keys on the keyboard now I just take this template and uh, temporarily attach it here with some tape, I guess. Move it around wherever I want it. I'll probably want the keys up here a little so I've got a place to kind of rest my fingers. Not right up near the edge, but maybe like that. Like, it'll work out about right. So I'll tape that right there. And then I can uh, mark where these go. Just center punch them and go out on the drill press. Probably use a unibit and take it up to the size where the switch will fit through. Get all the holes center punched. Now I'm going to drill these out with a unibit. A unibit is a uh, drill bit with different size steps on it, so you can drill different size holes all in one drill bit. This was generously donated to me by one of my viewers. Pretty nice kit, set of four of them. Thanks a lot for that. Let's get it chucked up in the drill. Get drill in some holes. Yeah, it looks like there's just enough there to put that nut on and hold it in place. one. You can see that the uh, paper didn't drill through real clean on the other side so I'll clean that up with a random orbital sander. Now I can mount up all my switches here and um, I've got an idea for the uh, potentiometer here. Let's see. The way that I'm going to mount these up, they all need to go on here in such a way where I can reach them and be able to tune the, the thing in. So I think what I'll do is just poke one of the leads right through one of the uh, leads on the switch so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about there. And I'll just solder that up and then that'll just sit right there and I can push the button and then tune it in and it'll be a good place to mount the potentiometer. So I'll orient these with the uh, the terminals here and here on every one of the switches. Looks like I've actually got room for the washer to go on as well. 
That's good. go now before I go any further I'm gonna test every one of these for continuity because these things can be a little glitchy a okay I bent over the tab that goes into the switch bent the middle tab out straight and I'm gonna leave this one just like it is that'll be my ground common they'll run all the way down here so I'll get this soldered up and just apply a little heat really quickly here. One thing I've noticed with this particular switch is it doesn't like to have a lot of heat on it for a long time. It tends to melt and move around in the base of the switch really easy. So that's what I'll do to all these and then I can turn it and it's mounted solid. So now I'm going to solder all these up. That's right, I said that word again, solder. Um, you know, it's like boulder, B-O-L-D-E-R, or holder, H-O-L-D-E-R, or solder, S-O-L-D-E-R. Do you say boulder, botter? Do you say holder, hotter? No, you say holder. When you say boulder, why not say solder? I can hear you out there screaming right now saying, because it's pronounced solder. Well, it may be pronounced that way, but it's spelled solder. And that's uh, how the rest of the world says it. And so what if I'm in America? I'm gonna say solder. America, land of uh, 1930 seconds. Yeah, I rest my case. So, I've got a whole bunch of switches and uh, potentiometers here. So what's it all mean? Well, what we're doing is we're substituting this potentiometer for, uh, I think it's R1 on the A-stable circuit. So everything will be common. So all of the switch outputs are common and they will go to uh, let's see pin 7 then all of the center uh, terminals on the potentiometer the wiper those will all go to pin um, 8 so what I need to do is just run a copper wire along all of these that'll be a common connection as I push the switch it will activate only this potentiometer between pin 7 and 8 and I can tune it to the note I want. Follow along? Good. I hope so. Let's get soldering more stuff. Here's the perf board that I'm using. Uh, this is salvaged from one of my other projects, one of the talking robots. That right there is an LM386 amplifier circuit. This is where I'm going to put my 555 that's going to make the, uh, the tones. Over here, I'm going to put a second 555 that's going to do some other fun stuff. We'll get to that in a minute. So I'm just going to continue to uh, build up the same circuit that's right here on the breadboard onto this 555 right now, an A-stable circuit. <laughs> okay, I finally have all this stuff wired up here. Uh, let's take a look at what we've got going on here on this board. This is an LM386 uh, one half watt amplifier. This is the original 555A stable that I had breadboarded up earlier. Right now I've got it just wired up with um, uh, a resistor just for a specific frequency. And remember I can tune this to each one of the keys on my organ. Over here is what I call the squonk circuit and it is a 555 in a stable mode and the output of this goes to a little LED right in here and this is connected via a piece of shrink wrap 
to a photoelectric cell, which changes its resistance with light, also known as a light dependent resistor. Now what's going on here is this light will flash as it does, it changes the resistance here and that is connected to, that, that thing there is connected to pin five. What that'll do is it'll change the frequency output of this A-stable oscillator. So let me demonstrate here. We'll zoom back a little so you can see everything that's going on. I plug in the battery and what I'll do is I'll engage the squonk circuit. First you'll just hear a tone. I've got a volume knob here. So I can turn the volume up and down. Uh, there's no push button at the moment. It's just wired up here with a, I think a 470 ohm resistor. Now we'll activate the squonk and the light is flashing and it makes it sound like that. Now with this resistor, I can change the rate that that light flashes, the rate that that 555 A stable is putting out. So I can speed it up. Turn it up a little more, you can hear it. I call that the squawk. And I can slow it way down. Cool. So every time you press a key, that's the sound you'll get if you have the squonk enabled. So if you want to turn it off, you can just turn it off like that. So what I'll probably do is put a switch there so I can hard switch it on if I want and maybe put one extra momentary contact switch so I can play around with it if I want to just enable and disable it really quickly. So that's it, there's the circuit. Now remember this lead right here that has the 470 ohm on it will get connected up to this array right here on these wires. And that way each one of these will activate that. Now the funny thing that's gonna happen when this is all done is if you push multiple buttons, you're gonna get different resistance values going on that will be additive. So that'll get all crazy funky so this this thing should be pretty fun so now it's just all about putting all this crap inside the box cut a hole for the speaker cut a hole for the squonk uh speed a hole for the potentiometer for the volume one for the hard switch and then one more big switch for the momentary contact to activate the squonk I almost forgot, I need a big old on off switch. Let's see what's in the vintage electronics switch box. Ooh, there we go. That's the ticket right there. That baby is cool. Old school. Everything is mounted up. Let's put a battery in this thing. Got a little battery mount off to the side here. All the wires are tucked away nicely. Battery's a little bit close to the switch, it looks like. There we go. On. We got a tone and volume. Now we just need to tune this sucker. On. Ahaha. See, they all sound pretty close to each other now. So the first thing we need to do is tune it. 
Now you can use a uh, you could use a tuner. You could use an app on a smartphone. I'm just gonna use my ears because I got a pretty good ear. I'm a musician. So there's our first note. Oh, that's not bad. Right off, that's that's pretty good. C. That's a D. E. I see. I should have a nice octave interval here between this C and this one. That one's a little sharp, really, to my ear, but... That takes care of the basic notes. Then we'll go for the uh, the what would be the black keys next. Those are half steps. These are whole steps. That's a little flat. Okay, let's go for those half steps. Well, that's weird. Does that just me or does it actually change pitch? No, it's me. <laughs> that one's okay where it's at, which is really weird. one should be let's see what we got That's it, we're all tuned up. All right, let's see what this baby will do. Um, since it's my birthday, I sh should try happy birthday, I suppose, first. Yay. Now let's check out the squonk circuit. Yeah. Now, here's the deal with this. Each one of these is set to a resistance, and it's between pins 7 and 8, okay? If I push multiple buttons, what I'm doing is I'm actually adding resistors. So let's, just for the sake of argument, say this is 100 ohms. Let's say this one's 200 ohms. Well, those two together are going to be... 
a different resistance. Uh, let's see, resistance works the other way around. So when you put resistors together uh, in a series, they are additive. When you put them in parallel, they're subtractive. So 100, 200, that would be 300 ohms. You'll get the idea here, listen to this. Well, let's go back with the squonk off first. So you don't get polyphonic tones. Poly meaning many, phonic meaning sound, right? Many sounds. You can't have polyphonic sounds with one 555 timer. You would have to have one uh, 555 oscillator for each one of these notes. You could build that. It would take a lot of messing around. You'd, you know, you'd have to have one of those for every single note on the uh, keyboard. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to leave it like it is. But the neat thing is it's additive and it makes for some fun stuff. Now if we throw in the squonk. So I can use that like a rhythm. So there's my bass. <laughs> this thing is just too much fun. I think we need labels now. I think I should make a whole label panel for this. Um, so you have labels on all this and put a name on it here. I think I'm going to call it the Squonk Box 55 because it's for my 55th birthday and it's using 555's, my favorite little chip ever. Let's take a look at how everything works here. We'll uh, examine the schematic that I drew up. So this is basically two 555s in a stable mode. The first 555 produces a given frequency that's output in a square waveform, comes out of pin three, goes through a one microfarad decoupling capacitor, goes into the LM386 audio amplifier, gets amplified one half watt, comes out the speaker. And uh, let's see, the volume is over here on this side in this particular application. On the LM386 amplifier that I built on the website on Hackaweek, um, the volume's on the input side. But if you want more information on the LM386, by the way, there is a video here on my YouTube channel, and there's also a project page on the uh, Hackaweek website. Just go there and type in LM386 in the search bar and you'll find it. Back over here to this first 555. So it's in A stable mode and what's going on is it's outputting a square waveform. The frequency is determined by the uh, resistor that's between pin 6 and 7 and between 7 and 8. Also by this 4.7 microfarad capacitor from pin 2 to ground. Those three components are what determine the frequency. This is a potentiometer here, uh, R1, the one that's between pins 7 and 8. This is the one that's repeated 13 times, and this switch is also repeated 13 times, and that is what's on top of the cigar box, those 13 buttons. That's this section right here. Down here is a detail of what goes on with that. It's a common connection between the wiper of the potentiometer and between the switch. The switch goes to pin 7, the wiper goes to pin 8. The other side of that potentiometer goes nowhere. It's not connected to anything. We're only using it as a simple variable resistor, not in a voltage divider sense. So that covers that. 
Now this 555 is what takes care of the squonk effect. So it's also in A stable mode, outputting a frequency, but it's a very low frequency. It's what makes this LED light flash. And on this one, things are switched around the other way. The potentiometer is on pins six and seven, and the 100 ohm resistor is on seven and eight. The reason for that is this will determine the on time of the LED, not the off time. So that is housed inside a piece of shrink wrap where it shines on a light dependent resistor and those things have a quality where they change resistance depending on how much light is hitting them. So it's changing the resistance every time the light is on and off. That resistor is connected between the positive rail voltage and the control pin, pin 5, of this first 555. So it changes the way that this 555 oscillates. So when it gets a voltage, it oscillates at a different frequency. When it doesn't get a voltage, it's back to the frequency that it was at. That's what creates that squonk effect. What else? Um, I think that's about it. We've got nine volts coming in right here. We have a 100 microfarad decoupling cap across the voltage rail. Always a good idea to do that. Always a good idea to connect pin four, the reset, to the positive side of the uh, voltage rail and well there you go it's the squonk box 55 explained if you want this uh, schematic for yourself it will be on the project page on hack -a week and i will post that project page link down below there in the video description got a panel made up holes all cut already i used adobe illustrator to lay this out just measured things out ahead of time and there we go the squonk box so we've got all of our controls here I actually put another old-timey vintage switch in here for the uh, squonk control off and on and uh, relabeled it that way so we got squonk speed, we got the power on off, we have the volume and the squonk control off and on. So now I just need to get the knobs back on. And this thing is complete. Ta-da! There it is, the squonk box 55 in all of its glory. Lovely, huh? I repositioned the battery over here, it worked out a little better. There's the other vintage switch in place. That's a little crooked, there we go. That's it, it's done! It's ready to play with. All right. Well, you know what? I think we should play happy birthday on it because, well, today's my birthday. Yay! That about wraps it up. I'm having a lot of fun with the Squonk Box here. Coolest birthday present I think I ever made for myself. I hope you enjoyed this build as much as I enjoyed building it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the donations. And until next time. Say it's your birthday. If happy birthday. <laughs> you say it's your birthday. Happy birthday to you. You say it's your birthday. We're gonna have a good time. Can you tell me to pray? <laughs>